Dexter was one of the OG vigilantes that everyone loved, and now he's back with a spin-off series called Dexter New Blood. With the new series comes a whole new set of plot holes. In this video, we're going to go over some of the biggest plot holes ever revealed in Dexter New Blood. So without further ado, let's get into the video. What is Dexter New Blood about? Last time we saw Dexter, he was driving his boat right into a hurricane and resurfacing as a lumberjack in a totally different part of the country. New Blood picks up a couple of years after that. In the show, Dexter is now known as Jim Lindsay, who lives a much simpler life far away from crazy life as a blood splatter analyst. He lives in Iron Lake, a small town in New York where basically everyone knows each other. Despite his history with the police force, his girlfriend is actually the chief of police. After his sister died, Dexter now has hallucinations about her and often talks to her as a coping mechanism. The hallucinations organizations originally started out with his adopted father, Harry, so he's been having these for a while now. Even though he's trying to live a peaceful life, he still has his need to kill, but he's managed to tone it down quite a bit and hasn't killed anyone in over 10 years. However, things start to go south when his son Harrison finds him and is actually shown to have some killer tendencies just like his dad. This isn't too surprising since he witnessed his own mom's death at four, was raised by a serial killer, and literally has Dexter of all people as his dad. But to know for sure if Harry actually does have any of his dad's murderous tendencies, you're gonna watch the show. The plot full of holes. Even though Dexter was a pretty great show, there's no one that wouldn't agree with the fact that the show was riddled with plot holes, right down to the very end. Seems like the spin-off series has inherited that trait too. Even though the season is just about to wrap up, there are already lots of plot holes that the fans have noticed. And in this video, we're gonna be going over some of them. Hannah's death. After living a peaceful life in Iron Lake, Dexter's son, Harrison, returns out of literally nowhere. The last time we had seen Harrison was when Dexter left him and his girlfriend, Hannah, behind and let them go to Spain without telling them anything. Harrison told Dexter that Hannah had actually died of pancreatic cancer three years beforehand. He ended up finding his dad from the letter that Dexter left for Hannah. The letter from Dexter was telling Hannah that she needs to contact him if Harrison ever starts to show any dark tendencies. Crazy thing is that Dexter just leaves it at that and doesn't question Harrison about Hannah at all. However, many people actually found that this didn't really make that much sense. Hannah was a super smart serial killer herself, so it doesn't really make sense that she would just abandon Harrison in Spain knowing that she was going to die. Wouldn't it make more sense for her to at least contact Dexter to warn him about the possibility of her dying? Even if she was hopeful about her situation, how could someone like her just be okay with leaving Harrison, the kid she cared for like her own her whole life. Eh, just fend for himself after she died. Makes more sense that something suddenly happened to her, but the show never ends up going into that and just lets this mystery be. Maybe this is a storyline that would be visited later on, but for now, this remains as one of the plot holes in the show. The convenience of Angel Batista talking with Dexter. One of the biggest plot holes in the entire series was when the chief of police, Angela, also Dexter's girl, girlfriend, finds out that Jim isn't really who she thinks he is. The conference. It all started when Angela just had to go to a conference meeting in New York City. There, she just so happens to meet Angel Batista, who's actually Dexter's former boss. At the conference, Angela started talking about the string of missing people in Iron Lake. Then, Batista conveniently mentioned that one of his former employee's wives was actually murdered right under his nose. The former employee in question is actually Dexter himself, and the wife was Rita. He also mentioned how Rita's son Harrison witnessed his own mother's death right in front of him and was lying in her pool of blood. Angel Bautista's existence in the show itself is a massive plot convenience moment, but for him to also go on and mention everyone, Debbie, Dexter, Rita, and Harrison, just a little too much. But they needed that to set what happened next into motion. Harrison's mention. When Angela heard the name Harrison, she immediately started suspecting that that this might be the same person as Jim's son. She had just very recently met Jim's son, Harrison, back in Iron Lake. Angela decided to search for Dexter, Rita, and Harrison on the web 
After seeing Dexter's obituary, she ended up finding out that Dexter was actually the same person as Jim. When she confronted Dexter about all of this, he just pretended like he was running away because he was scared of the serial killer coming for him next. He made it seem like he was just wanted to live a solitary life because he was scared of the serial killer and not because he actually murdered people himself. This whole debacle is basically littered with plot holes everywhere. How did Angela conveniently have a conference meeting with Batista? Why did Batista mention Dexter and Harrison? And why did Angela automatically assume that there was only one Harrison in the world? Angela's research had a huge inconsistency. This is probably the biggest plot hole that the show ever had. Turns out, dating the chief of police wasn't really the smartest idea that Dexter has ever had, even though it would have helped him stay inside the police's circle and find things out before everyone else. It also meant that she might end up doing some digging into his past of her own. After finding out about Harrison's overdose and the fact that he told Audrey that his father's real name isn't Jim, she starts looking into Jim. She also finds out that Jim beat up the drug dealer that was responsible for Harrison's brush with death. While talking to the dealer, she also finds out that Jim stabbed him with a ketamine needle in his neck and only started beating him up after the police got there. After finding out about the possibility that Jim might be from Miami, she searches for ketamine Miami homicide and the Bay Harbor butcher pops up. This leads her to think that Jim might have been the killer. However, this whole thing is a plot hole because the Bay Harbor butcher didn't use ketamine. He used M99. However, Jim does use ketamine. The search shouldn't have said that considering there was an entire episode where the M99 thing was a major subject. It doesn't really make sense for the writers to just forget all about it in the spinoff. The public incineration probably didn't get rid of all the human remains. Dexter's 10-year long break from killing ended literally in the first episode, where he kills an entitled rich kid, Matt Caldwell. Well, this one needs a little backstory. Dexter has been working at a small store called Fred's Fish and Game for a couple of years. During the first episode, his first customer is Matt Caldwell, who asks for a rifle. But when Dexter asks to see his ID for the federal background check, Caldwell starts lashing out at him and says that it's ridiculous. Matt ends up pressurizing Dexter into selling him the rifle anyway. Afterward, he and Matt actually see each other again at the bar. Matt invites Dexter to his party at his house. The next day, Fred, the owner of the shop, asks Jim to deliver Caldwell's guns to his house. Dexter very reluctantly agreed because he knew there was a party going on. At the party, he finds out that Matt had actually killed five other people in a boating accident. At this point, Dexter's murderous tendencies start taking over one top of that. He also had the ammunition to commit his murder. He ends up murdering after Matt himself tries to shoot him. This marks the return of Dexter's dark passenger the plot hole. Here's where the actual plot hole comes into play. After killing Matt, Dexter needs to get rid of his body somehow. Being a criminal mastermind for years, you'd expect him to know exactly what to do to dispose of the body, right? He killed hundreds of people without ever leaving a trace. Well, this time, he decides to use the public incinerator in his town to get rid of the body, which many fans thought was pretty unrealistic. This is because most incinerators can't actually destroy all the traces of human body, especially the bones, something that Dexter knew which was why he used to dump bodies into the ocean in the original series. A plot hole that's far too massive to ignore. That's a wrap for today's video. Did we miss any plot holes from Dexter New Blood? Make sure to let us know in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more videos like this one. We'll see you next time.